Hi again, this is Jeff, your ProtoPy expert answering your ProtoPy questions. Today's question comes from Offsol. Is there a way to set and view a timer? I'd like a three minute timer with a progress bar that decreases with the timer. Yeah, you can do that. I'm gonna show you how to do it. In my Pi here, I have a few things set up. I've got my timer display, which will be minutes and then seconds. I have my progress bar, which will decrease to the left as the timer counts down. I've got a start button, which is a start stop toggle, by the way, and it's already set up the to toggle itself. I'll show you that in a second. And I'm gonna have a reset button, which will reset my timer back to three minutes. Now I mentioned that my start stop was a toggle and that's already set up to toggle. So when I click it once, it changes state to be red with the stop text. And if I click it again, it goes back to start. And that is essentially doing that based on the value of the text in here. So when it is start, it changes to red and it changes the label to stop. And when it is stop, it resets the button back to its initial state. Okay, now, how do we set this up so that way when I hit the start button, it starts counting down? We need some way to keep track of how many seconds are left in our timer. Uh, you recall that you can store a little bit of information using something called a variable. You can set up a variable in your bottom left panel here, and if it is, if it looks like this, where it's just this little thing here and it's not expanded, click it once, that'll expand it press plus and choose for this scene. We only have one scene in our projects, so it's just gonna be for this scene. And I'm gonna call this variable seconds. It is a number and we're going to set it to 180. That is three minutes in seconds. When I hit the start button, I want this to start counting down. And anytime you want to change the value of a variable, you use the assign response. So let's add an assign response and I wanna assign a new value to the seconds variable. And I'm gonna use a formula here. And in my formula, I'm going to say seconds minus one. All right, now what's going on here is it's taking the current value of seconds, subtracting one, and whatever the result of that is, it's assigning it back to the seconds variable. So every time this runs, it will decrease the number of seconds by one. I'd like this to repeat every second, and I don't want this to happen immediately, by the way. I want this to be delayed by one second. So when I start the timer, it's gonna be three minutes, 2.59, 2.58. So it's gonna be a, a one second delay before you see it change. So let's delay this by one second, and let's repeat this. We're gonna repeat it indefinitely. We'll handle when it gets down to zero later. And the interval will be, three, will be one second. So every second, it's going to decrease by one. And then if I press the start stop button again, I want to stop counting it down. And the easiest way to do that is to just use the stop response. And I'm gonna use it on the seconds variable, much the same way as you can stop animation in its tracks with the stop response when you use it on a, an item that's on your stage here. Whenever you have updating changes happening to a variable, we'll stop those. So I've got this set to repeat indefinitely, the stop, stop that repeat. Okay, now if I preview this, nothing's happening because we haven't told it to update our display, but we can verify that our seconds are counting down. So we've created this seconds variable. Anytime you want to see the value of seconds at any point in time, or the value of any variable for that matter, it has this little ladybug icon here. You could, if you click that, you'll get this green box and you can drag this around anywhere you like. I'm just gonna put it in the center up here. And now if I preview this, it's currently showing me the value of 180. And if I hit start, we should see it decrease. And there we go, now it's decreasing as we go. And if I stop, it should stop decreasing. And if I hit start again, it should continue. Okay, great. Now the last thing we want to do is we'd like to reset our seconds. So anytime I hit this reset button, it's gonna reset it back to 180 seconds. I also want it to put it in a stopped state. So I wanna stop the countdown. So in my reset, I'm gonna do two things. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to, well, I wanna stop the countdown. So I'm gonna stop on the seconds. I'm going to assign to the seconds variable back 180, put it back to its initial state. And I am going to uh, make sure that the start stop button is in, in its initial state as well. So I would like to reset it. I'm just gonna copy this. Right. We could also use reset here on the, uh, on the variable. And in fact, let's do that. Let's reset our second variable.
we should see this working now. So if I start, it starts counting down. If I hit reset, my countdown should stop. My stop button should change to start and seconds should reset to 180. And there we go, it did exactly that. Start, reset. Okay, our timer is working. Now we just have to make the display reflect the number of minutes and seconds remaining. We're going to do that uh, with a detect trigger. So anytime the value of seconds changes, this detect will fire. So we're gonna choose the seconds variable to do a detect on. And let's rename this detect seconds. And we want to do something. And what we want to do is update the text in that field. So I'm going to say text, select the layer. This will be the, uh, the timer text field. I don't want to put explicit text in here because we have to calculate this based on the number of seconds left. So instead of static text, we're going to use a formula. Now in my formula, I need to calculate the number of minutes. I need to add a colon. And then I need to calculate the number of seconds. So let's start with calculating the number of minutes. And we're gonna do this using a, um, a built-in function that Protopie has. And if you don't know how to, where to find these functions, if you go to Protopie's website, you go to learn, go to documentation, and if you expand the items down here, expand formulas, you're gonna see functions here. We're using a math function. And the math function we're gonna use is called floor. And what floor does is this will give us the whole number of division. So if you do something that doesn't divide evenly, so if you did uh, you know, 125 divided by 60, that's two point something, that's just gonna give you the two. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna use this to calculate the number of minutes that are, are remaining. So if we're counting down from 180, 180 divided by 60, that divides evenly, that gives us three. 150 divided by 60 gives us 2.5, that'll give us the two because it discards the 0.5, etc. So let's go back and do this in our formula. So we start with the name of the function, which is floor, open brackets, seconds, that's our variable, divided by 60. And in computer speak, a forward slash means division. There's no divided by button on the keyboard. Uh, and similarly, when you're doing multiplication, it's a uh, an asterisk. In our case, we want division. So this should give us the number of minutes. Now let's preview this. And if we start, all right, there we go. It's two something as this counts down. Okay. Now we'd like to add the colon and we can do that whenever we're joining text, we can just say plus and this text is explicit. It never changes. So we use quotes and then whatever we want the text to be in this case, it's a colon and then quotes again to end the text. So now I should get two colon. Okay, now let's do our seconds. The seconds calculation is a little bit trickier. What we want to show is the number of seconds within that minute left. Now we have the number of seconds, right? But this will give us whatever that value is. So 180, 179, 178, that kind of thing. We'd like the total number of seconds and we'd like to subtract the minutes in seconds. Now we don't have these as variables, right? So this is why Protopie is giving us the, um, the, the underline in here. However, we know how to calculate minutes because we've done that already. That's this one right here. So I'm gonna copy this, Command C or Control C on Windows, and I'm gonna replace minutes here. So this is now giving us minutes, and I'd like to convert these minutes back to seconds. So I'm gonna multiply by 60. Now, since this is a comp uh, complicated bit of work here, I'm gonna surround the whole thing here in, uh, in brackets. This is a text addition here. Protopie could get confused and they don't know if you're trying to do, if you're trying to join text or if you're trying to do some math. So essentially what we do is put all this in brackets. Protopie will do all this first, get the result. And then the only thing left to do is convert it to text, which is what this plus will do. Okay, so now this should give us a timer working, right? 259, 58, 57, working, right? Well, not quite. I'm gonna change my timer here to be 15 seconds. Now, when I preview this and I start, it's gonna start counting down 14, 13. Watch what happens when it goes below 10. 
Okay, not good. We want this to be 06, 05, 04, not just four. So how do we do that? We're going to use another formula. So if we go back to our formulas here, and in this case, it will be a text formula, and we're going to use the LPAD formula. That's this one. And what this will do is this will pad uh, a bit of text with a number of characters to a certain length that you, that you say. So the example here is we want to pad this bit of text, which is the number five, to a length of two characters, and we're going to use the zero character here to pad it with. So, and then that gives us the zero five to the left. In this example, we wanna pad it to a length of four characters, also using the zero character, which is why you have zero, 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 five. So four characters in length padded with zeros at the front. We're gonna use the almost the exact same thing here, but instead of five, we're gonna use whatever value of seconds happens to be at that moment. So let's go back to our, let's go back to our detect here and in the text. All right, we're gonna surround this whole bit here in the LPAD function. So LPAD, open brackets. This calculates our number of seconds within that minute. So that's our first parameter, comma, the length of characters we want, which is two and the character to use the pad width, which is zero. And close the bracket to close the function. And now when we preview this and our countdown starts at 15 seconds, we should see this countdown and now we should see 09, 08, there we go, working perfectly. We gotta handle something else now. What happens when it goes past zero? It continues counting down. We don't want that. We want it to stop at zero. The first thing we wanna do is in our detect, we need to put in a condition. So we always want the text to update. So we're just gonna to continue to do, to do that. But when number of seconds is zero, we want to stop the timer. So let's copy this stop, paste it in here. And we want to put our start stop button back to the start state. So we're going to reset the start stop button. All right, let's preview this. And we'll let it count down. We'll let it go all the way to zero. 10, 9, 8, 7. It's like we're counting down the space shuttle liftoff. 4, 3, 2, 1. Stopped. Okay, great. Uh, what happens if I hit the start button again? Okay, it's still counting down. We also need to put a condition on our start. And on our start here, we have when the text equals start, let's add a second test on here to say when the number of seconds is greater than zero. So add another test. And when seconds are greater than zero, we can start the timer. So now we'll preview this again and we'll let it count down to, uh, to zero. It should stop on its own when it gets there. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. It stopped. And if I hit start again, it's not gonna go. But if I reset it and I start, I can start. Okay, our timer is working perfectly. Let's put our number of seconds back up to 180 because we've handled everything we need to handle. The last thing we need to do is we need our progress bar to decrease as the timer counts down. That's a pretty easy thing to do. We're gonna use the chain trigger for this. We're gonna chain the number of seconds with the width of the progress bar. So as the value of seconds changes, we're gonna change the width of the progress bar. So we're gonna use the scale response for that. Progress bar, and we have to set up a range here. And the range will be when the seconds are 180, we want the progress bar to be full width. And when the seconds reach zero, we want the width to be zero. So the full width is what happens to be on the stage right now, which is 313 pixels. So we'll go back to our scale and we'll make 313. 
Now, the way a range trader works is you've given it the maximum and minimum values. Protopy figures out everything in between. So as seconds decreases, the width will decrease in proportion to the number of seconds that are left. So when seconds reaches 90, which is halfway between 180 and zero, the width will be the halfway point here. Let's see if this is working. I'm gonna start and my progress bar is counting down as we go. I'll give it a few seconds so you can actually see it go, but the blue portion is decreasing as the seconds go. And if I hit reset, because the width of the bar is chained to the value of seconds, seconds change back to 180, the width accordingly went back to full width. Now there's one little thing left we wanna fix. Right now, when I'm in my start condition, uh, it's showing zero, zero, zero. And when I start, you don't see it change until it hits 259. Uh, there's a couple of ways we can handle this. The easiest way is to just change what it looks like on the stage. I'm just gonna change this three minutes. So now I'm gonna preview this. My timer is three minutes. I hit start and it'll start counting down. And if I reset, it goes back to three minutes. And reset will work by the way when the timer is stopped as well. So if I start it and I stop it, start it again, stop it again, and then if I reset, it's gonna to reset to three minutes, put everything back to the way it was. There you go, easy as pie. Countdown timer with a progress bar. If you've run into any snags in one of your pies and you'd like to ask us for help, check out the link in the description below. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.